mentioned before the tsunami, so I wanted to add a few thoughts at the beginning, because that's being touched on quite strongly. In Hawaii, the siren started, tsunami siren started uh, about 10 at night. It's such a good system, it gives you warning, so all the tourists on our island had to evacuate and go inland. Unfortunately, the rain that hit our island was only about two and a half feet high. So it just damaged a few boats. But subsequently, I've been asked, what about this tragedy? And I know some individuals who were quite upset with it, who had ties to a Japanese community, who had immigrated from Japan, for example. And the simple answer I gave is, it's a natural disaster, meaning it's nature. It's what nature does. We live on a dangerous planet. And I noticed in one comment that the scientist said this is a once in a thousand year event. So what does this mean? It means within the next thousand years it's going to happen again. <laughs> so part of it is our unwillingness to acknowledge that it is a dangerous planet. We build our house right on the fault line and we're confident nothing will ever happen. But it does. And as you'll see in the rest of the answer, God didn't guarantee us uh, a planet free of imperfections. And the fact that it is imperfect perhaps goads us on to grow spiritually. So my answer more is on the idea of evil individuals. You know, is there an evil individual versus a good individual? That was how I took it. So in Hinduism, we view all individuals as intrinsically good. Said another way, the essential nature of all people is their soul, which is perfect goodness. However, the soul is living in a physical body. Thus, in addition to our soul, which we call our intuitive nature, from the Hindu point of view, we also have an instinctive and an intellectual nature, which we call man's Threefold nature. Instinctive nature digests our meals, enables us to breathe. We don't have to think about these things. But it also has certain emotions emotions of self preservation, emotions of anger and fear, emotions of greed. All of that comes along with having a physical body in Hindu philosophy. We also have an intellectual nature, the ability to think the ability to control our emotions through reason. And we have the intuitive or spiritual nature, which Hinduism being a mystical religion looks at as experientially. We can see inner light or divine light within us. We can have intuitive insights into the nature of ourselves and others, which comes from our soul. So clearly it's not our soul which acts in an evil way, it's the instinctive nature. And therefore, the spiritual path consists initially of learning to control these basic instinctive tendencies of anger and fear and our tendency to hurt others. So, from the Hindu point of view, if someone acts in evil ways, he's not an evil person. He's just not very good at controlling his instinctive nature. So said with a Texas analogy, the instinctive nature is like a wild horse that needs to be tamed. Until it is, it's liable to lash out and hurt other people. But religion gives us the guidelines to tame this wild horse, to control our instinctive nature, gives us values, gives us the goal of being compassionate in times of tragedy, reaching out and helping others. So another factor related to suffering is that God didn't design the world to make us perfectly happy. We're not supposed to be perfectly happy. If we were perfectly happy, we'd stay here, right? Who would want to go to heaven? Who would want to have a spiritual experience? No one. We'd just stay here. So the fact that the world isn't perfect is one of the reasons we're catalyzed to move on. 
in the mystical tradition of Hinduism were catalyzed to look within because the happiness we seek doesn't come from the world, be it possessions or even people. It comes from being in touch with our soul nature, which is always useful. Thank you.